if I can find the largest frog in the whole world. Wow, yes, look at that. My name's Jack Randall and I'm a zoologist. Wow! And I'm showing you every animal on the planet. They're not seeing me as a threat. Spinning cobra! Hello. Absolutely gorgeous. Going about their business. Yes. Come on, let's go. The sun's just coming up, and now is my time to start looking and surveying the actual ecosystem I'm in, and then finding small habitats. So that might be a little rocky outcrop, it might be an open plains area, it might be a dry riverbed, all these little places where animals like to live. Come and have a look at this. An armoured cricket. And as you can see, there's a reason why he's called an armoured cricket. Look at those spikes on that abdomen there. The absolute beast, kind of alien looking creature. Look at those antennae also just kind of moving all over the place. Now these animals are really quite common. This is a very good indication that this is a very healthy ecosystem. There's more animals around because this is perfect food for lots of different creatures, lizards, snakes and frogs and even small mammals they'll love to munch these guys because he's such a good meal he's actually evolved a few mechanisms to try and deter you from eating him and the most hilarious one is that if you cause a bit of a threat if i actually start grabbing him he will start to squirt his blood what a little character though oh i let him go and we'll just keep looking for other habitats What I'm actually looking for is some kind of water source because those places are where most animals are likely to be, especially at this time of the day when the sun is starting to come out. And actually this place up here is looking quite good. So I might get over there and have a little look around. Ah, yes. I took my binoculars out and I can see quite a large marsh terrapin. Let's see if we can get close to him. But this is amazing. I absolutely love these guys. And sometimes they call them the crocodile turtle. Ah, he's just gone in. That's it. I just. They're, they're extremely sensitive. So we're still maybe 30 meters, 20 meters away, and the terrapin's just gone straight, dive straight into the water. Okay. So uh, this is just amazing. This is epic. This here, that's a leopard. We've got a leopard that's using this as a route to the water. So cool. It's always exciting to see signs of top predators. That's because where they are, the whole food chain below will also be around. Let's keep looking. So there's actually quite a common creature. They're called rock hyrexes. Little mammal, you'll see them. It's actually, it looks like a mother and a baby there. And they spend most of their time in the cracks in the middle of the day, but it's still a good time for them to be out foraging. This here has got to be the place I'll be coming back tonight. There's got to be animals all over the shop because this is that sanctuary where they know they can get that water. It might look really cool now, but imagine at night time, it's going to be a little bit more creepy. Come on, let's come back later. As night falls, a whole new set of animals become active. In the waterways, it's the frogs that emerge, especially now as it's frog spawning season and I'm keeping an eye out for the biggest and most famous species, the giant African bullfrog. Oh, whoa, look at that. First animal of the night, giant millipede. During the day, he must have been hiding underneath this rock, 
and as sun comes down, immediately coming out to forage. This is a nocturnal creature. Woo! There you are. You might remember in Asia, I found quite a few of these. And this one is actually the African giant millipede. And it's actually the biggest species in the world. But they're not venomous, unlike centipedes that have got fangs. These ones are totally harmless. But they do have a defense mechanism. So they've always got a really quite hard exoskeleton, which makes it quite tough for predators to kind of chew through. And if there is any threat, he'll curl up into a ball. So I know that the way he's crawling over my hand, it's quite calm and relaxed and seeing, just kind of sensing my arm and finding out what's going on with those antennae. And see what else is out and about. We've got our pond just here. So I'm just gonna follow along that pond. I'm gonna put you down on the floor let you on your way. Wow, look at that. That is amazing. Look how many froglets there are. There's just probably a hundred in this little patch of water just here. Oh, that's such a great sign though. It just shows that it's been a successful breeding season. So these tadpoles are now turned into their final stage, looking just like their frog form. But they've got a little bit more growing to go. So I'm gonna keep going along this stream to see what else I can find, particularly targeting frogs. Obviously they're all around and this is breeding season. And I'm also looking in the cracks as well, right by these, uh, the stream, because this will be where other animals will be coming down in order to drink. Ah, yes, look at that, first snake of the night, woohoo! That is amazing, look at that. That is the first time I've ever seen this species in my life. It's absolutely incredible, it's an egg-eating snake. Ah, oh, you are gorgeous. People believe that they actually are mimicking some venomous snake. This is a totally harmless snake. In fact, it's so harmless, it doesn't really have any teeth. So it can't cause any trouble at all, even if it bit me. It's because it specializes in eating eggs and just bird's eggs. And they can open it up very wide. And I'm just gonna pick you up. I love that. Egg eating snake. Almost like a million miles an hour, that tongue was going absolutely just sensing the environment, really calm, and just wrapped around my hand. But yeah, the way they actually eat eggs is quite remarkable because they can't actually digest the eggshell. So they have a modified vertebrae, which actually cracks the shell, and then they can consume the contents of that egg, and then they regurgitate the shell. And because they need as much space in their mouth as possible in order to engulf a big old bird egg. They don't really have any teeth and it would be a bit of a hindrance to have them. I love the fact that he's totally chilled. Even though this is a small little critter, it's still a crazy cool looking creature and the first time I've ever seen him. The egg eater. Yes. Let him on his way. Oh, look at that. Cricket, that's the character that's been making all that racket. Ah, oh, yes, I think I see a bigger frog in there. Wow, this is actually cool. Look at that, that's a frog. Popping his eyes out, oh, okay. Yes, woo, there you are. Wow, up close with the African clawed frog. And look at those feet, you can see why they're called clawed frogs. Look at that, amazing. It's so cool. The reason why they have those claws is so that they actually can dismember their prey. They have their eyes right on the top of their head. You see those eyes? It's completely crazy, it's almost like a crocodile. Now there's a really cool fact about these actually. In the 1990s, they were, oh, in the 1990s, 
They were trying to work out in, in space whether life can breed and reproduce. And the first ever experiment on a, a living animal or living being was actually the common platana. They took this one up in the Endeavour space shuttle to see if they could actually breed successfully. And they did in zero gravity. Really cool. Weird fact that this one was the first frog out in space. All right, I'm gonna let this one go back on his way. Off you go, mate. I'm going to keep looking along this water, see if I can find any more frogs. Yes. Wow. You have to be really quiet because this frog, if he darts into that pond, there's no way I'm going to get him. Right here, I've got one of the largest frogs in the whole world, the African bullfrog. If you just look behind these reeds, you can see in there. Right, let's go quietly. Ah! No! <laughs> wow, yes! Whoa! I'm gonna have to hold you really carefully because this is one of the strongest and biggest frogs in the whole world the African bullfrog. Look at that. Look at the way he puffs out as well to make him as big as possible. Imagine if I was a predator, if, if I was one of the hyenas, a hyena would definitely eat this. He would puff out as big as possible and trying to stop that predator from getting anywhere near and try and, and, and eat him. This is again, another new species for me in the wild. It's just such a cool character. Oh, wow. And you can see as well, those eyes, bulbous eyes. That's what's quite characteristic about the African bullfrog. But what is most, oh, whoa, well, stop grunting. Calm. One thing that's very characteristic about the African bullfrog is the size of that gob. They have huge mouths, and that is why they're so successful and why how they get so big. They can pretty much eat anything. They are voracious predators. They will eat snakes. They will eat other frogs. They even eat their own kind, and they will even eat mammals. They can pretty much just consume anything the size of their gob, and you can see how big it is. And this one I think is actually a male because the size of it, the males are bigger than the females, about double the size. And it's the biggest frog in Southern Africa. Third biggest frog in the world. And they can weigh up to two kilograms. This one, we're probably actually considered a small one. Ah, oh, they are like kind of almost like human-like frogs too, because you can see those hands, look at those front hands. They're not webbed like normal frogs because most of the time they're actually burrowed underneath the ground. So what this guy does, he actually burrows down deep underneath the ground for eight, nine, ten months of a year and surrounds himself with his own dead skin as a cocoon. And that dries up and it's waterproof, completely weatherproof. And when the rain comes, it dissolves that, that cocoon and he climbs out of his, his little burrow and hole and digs himself out of the ground. And then he goes looking for a female to breathe. So two months of the year, they'll be out breeding like crazy and they can actually lay up to 4,000 eggs. I'm just gonna put him down on the floor. So what I'm doing is actually covering his eyes for a little bit. Because they're nocturnal, um, they actually get a bit startled by the light from the camera. So I'm covering his eyes, let him calm down. And then once he's calm, he should stay in position. So slowly release my hand over his eyes. There you go, the African bullfrog. You can see those really quite characteristic ridges on that back. Almost looks a bit like a toad. What a way to end the evening. The first recce out here at night in Africa. We've come across some amazing species during the day and at dusk, but also begun to realize the different frog species that are living out here. You've got the African clawed frog, and then you've got this beast. What an amazing find for the end of the night largest frog in Southern Africa, the African bullfrog. Yes, happy hunting, mate.